Okay, I can see uh, a lot of people joining in and the participant list increasing. Still, it's increasing. However, I will start uh, so that all of you who have joined, uh, we can start at uh, on time. And uh, you have a Q&A button on your uh, Zoom toolbar. So this is something uh, we will do at the end. I will be going through this session. And then if you have any any questions, I will be taking all of your questions at the end of the session. So we will have some time for Q&A at the end. So I think we can uh, start now. Okay, so welcome all of you to this session on how to apply artificial intelligence to scripting and execution in Catalon Studio. I'm Raghav and I will be the speaker on this webinar. I have about 11 years of experience in automation testing, DevOps and CI. And I have worked on multiple projects across organizations on these topics. And nowadays I focus on teaching and training on these topics. I have a YouTube channel called Automation Step by Step where I uh, create tutorials and upload videos on automation and testing and DevOps CI. And I'm also a teacher on Udemy. So this was a brief about me and about the agenda for today. We will look at uh, very briefly what artificial intelligence is and its role. And we will see some examples on how artificial intelligence helps us to solve multiple problems. And uh, then we will dive into some practical demos on how we can use artificial intelligence to our test automation. So there are some uh, very useful plugins in Catalon that we can use and apply it to at a very basic level in our automation and make uh, things easier for us. So that is something we will uh, see and look at a practical demo. So artificial intelligence is a branch of computer science uh, where we create intelligent systems. And by intelligent system, I mean that we uh, create uh, systems which can learn and improve on their own and can take some decisions based on some external factors. So we are trying to create uh, more smarter and intelligent systems. To take some examples, uh, you must have seen a traffic signal. And here in the traffic signal, uh, we see traffic lights. So in earlier days, we used to see a traffic policeman who would stand in the middle of the signal and he would uh, direct and control the traffic manually. So that was all manual. Today we have automated traffic lights and this helps us and solves a lot of problem. However, there can be a situation where on a traffic signal on one of the lanes, there is huge traffic and the density is very high. And on the other lane, the density of traffic is very less. So we uh, need a kind of a smart and intelligent system that can check and analyze the traffic and density and accordingly provide uh, more duration of green signal to a lane that has high density or very frequent green signals and less green signal or less duration to the other lane. Now, in case we have a human who is controlling this traffic, a human can apply his intelligence and he can uh, provide more green signals or higher duration of green signal to the lane having high traffic density, but what in case of uh, softwares or programs. So in case we can apply some kind of uh, programming and we can impart some kind of intelligence to our automated lightning system, which can actually find out the density of the traffic and accordingly sense the need and based on the data it can analyze and can create a pattern and can finally uh, predict and then uh, make the signal green or red based on the density. That will be a smart sy a system of traffic lights and that will be a automated system with artificial intelligence. So this is a very, very simple example to understand what artificial intelligence uh, is and can do. Uh, to take some other examples, you must have seen Google Maps. So on a Google map, you put your destination and then it shows you the route to your destination. We have the line color changing to different colors based on the traffic situation and traffic density. 
Also, in case there is huge traffic or traffic jam on the proposed route, it can also uh, suggest some alternative route. So again, this is an uh, example of artificial intelligence. And then uh, we also see uh, we have uh, you must have heard of a uh, driverless car. So again, this is a uh, intelligent system which can actually uh, make a car drive without a driver. So all these are examples of artificial intelligence. Now, when we come to our problem that we as automation uh, folks face in day to day life, uh, one of the problems that we face a lot is object locators. So we need to find out a strategy or uh, we need a strategy where we can identify and locate elements and objects. And even if there is some changes at the back end, we can still have a system that is smart enough to locate those objects and still work and without and does not fail. So as of now, what we face is whenever there is a, there's a change at the back end, for the properties of the object that we use to identify or locate the objects, if there is any change, then there will be a failure in our test. For example, in the image that you can see, the ID of the email text box is email. And suppose we use this particular property to identify and locate the object in our automation scripts. In case there is any change in this ID, from the back end, the next time we run our test, it is going to fail. So we need a, a solution. We need a system that is smart enough and immune to these kind of changes. And here we have one of the solutions uh, in Catalon store is Auto Healing Smart XPath. So this is a plugin that we can use and it can actually identify objects even if there is some change in the properties of the object and can still work and identify the objects without failing the test. I will give you a demo on this. So I will right away go to my browser and I will go to Catalon website. And I believe most of uh, you uh, know about Catalon Studio and are already using it. But just if there are few folks who are completely new for Catalon, uh, this is a platform for API, web and mobile automation testing and it is a free tool. So you can just go to here free download for your Mac, Windows or Linux and you can start using it. You do not have to do a lot of setup. You can uh, get it and start creating your automation test. You can do recording or use a manual mode or use a scripting mode. So here, uh, this is the Catalon website. I will uh, go into plugins. And here you can see this is a plugin store. And here you can see we have all the plugins. So there are some free and paid plugins here. And here we have this auto healing smart XPath plugin. If I go here, this is the web page and some documentation about this plugin, how to use it. And then you can try it free here. So the first thing you will do is sign in to your, uh, with your email and password that you have used for Catalon Studio. So the same email and password needs to be used here and sign in. And then you can just go to this plugin, Auto Healing Smart XPath. And then you can just try it for free for now. And once you get it, if you go to your Catalon Studio, so I have my Catalon Studio here and I'm using version 6.1.2, which is the latest. And this is actually a beta version and the final version 6.1.2 should be available within this week. And you will find a plugin store here. Go here and say reload plugins. So I will go to plugin store reload plugins and it will show me all the plugins that I have installed and auto healing smart XPath is here. So the smart XPath plugin is here and you can also see the icon here. So I will click here and you can see this is a smart XPath. Make sure this is enabled. So by default it might be disabled. So you can go here and just click enable auto healing. And now the next thing I will do is I will go to my project. So let me just create a new project. I will go to file new 
and I will create a new project and I will say this is webinar demo and I'm going to save it under my D drive. So I have my projects folder, Catalon Studio here. I'm just going to store it here. Let me create a very simple web project and say, okay. So this is a new project and I will go to my project and go to settings. And here on the project settings, I will go to test design and web locators. Now here we have uh, two strategies, XPath and attributes. So I'm selecting XPath and here you can see multiple strategies used to locate objects on the web page. So we have a lot of these strategies which are coming directly from Selenium. However, there is this unique strategy by uh, that is used to locate the element based on its neighbors. And this is a, a new strategy developed and research and developed by Catalon team. So this is something is very useful and unique. I will show you and tell you about this. So I'm selecting XPath here and say, okay. And now I will also go to my project settings and in the execution, I will reduce the default uh, element timeout to five seconds so that we do not have to wait a lot of time. And now I'm going to create a new test case. So I will say new and I will say test case here and I will name this as test one and say, okay. So here I want to record something and we have a record web option here. I will click on record web and it will open the web recorder and to demo. I'm just going to use a demo website from Catalon, which is Catalon hyphen demo. And this is about the Cura healthcare services. I'm just going to copy this URL, provide the URL in the URL box here and I will start the recording on a Chrome browser. And you can see the Chrome browser is up here and I can now interact with the browser objects. I will click on make appointment and add the username John Doe and the password. This is not a password and login. And that's it. I'm going to stop this for now. So I will click on stop and I will say, okay. And you can see these are all the objects that are recorded during the test and they will be stored under this folder page Cura healthcare services under object repository folder. I will say, okay. And you can see the objects here and all the objects are here. And this is our test and I can also see the script mode is here and this is the manual mode. So I will quickly run my test. I will click on this run button and run it on a Chrome browser. So this should open a Chrome browser and start test and yes. And yes, it was very fast. So you can see everything is running fine. Everything is pass. Now let us take a situation where these locators change. So I'm going to one of the objects. Let me go to this button login and you can see Catalon Studio has identified a lot of locators and X path for this single object. And this is what is being used for locate location of this object. However, we also have a lot of other X paths and then we have this neighbor X path and you can see it is able to anchor that particular object based on its neighbors or surrounding elements. So this login button has a password and username before it. And then we have this Cura Health Services. So if I show you the web page, you can see this is the login button. And before this login button, we have username and password box. And then after this, we have this uh, Cura Healthcare Service text here. And all these are being used here to locate and identify this object. Now let us say there is some change in this locator for login button. So I'm just going to change this. 
I will say I am changing it to BTN login one, and I am changing it here as well to BTN login one, which is incorrect, and this should fail. I will save this. Make sure your auto healing X path is enabled, and I will go back to my test case, and I will try to run this again, and let us see what happens this time. So it goes to the Chrome browser and you can see it is waiting on login button. So it is not able to identify with the X path. So it is still waiting. But however, it finally clicked on it and you can see the logs, everything is green. And if I go to the console here, this was the, uh, here you can see it is unable to find the element. It's saying unable to find the element with this particular X path, which is BTN login one. And as soon as there was a failure, the smart X path came into action and it is now auto trying with other X paths. So you can see it is trying with all the other X paths. And here you can see all the other X paths are tried by this uh, plugin. And then the best strategy or the best X path is selected. So this is the best it could find out and it is now selected this and it has continued our test without any failures. So you can see it was very useful. There is no failure. Now the next thing you can do is go to this smart XPath icon and here you will find XPath auto healing logs. Go here and now it will show you the broken XPath and this is my broken XPath which is BTN login one and this is the new proposed XPath. So this is what is working. Now you have the option to approve it. So I can click here, approve, and I will say, okay. And if I go to the object repository again and refresh my object repository, I will right click and refresh. And you can see here, the locator is now changed. So this will now be used from next time onwards whenever I will run this test case. So this is a very useful. Let me give you a more uh, real world example. So I will go to this uh, page. This is a dummy uh, page I have created to show you uh, how exactly it works in real world. I will just copy this link. So this is a simple sign up page where we have an email text box, a password text box, re repeat password, and I will click on sign up. So I will create a new test case on my Catalon Studio. Right click on test cases and say this is test two and say okay. And I will again go to this record web. And here I'm going to give the URL and I will start recording on a Chrome browser. And you can see the Chrome browser is up and we have our web page here. So I will add my any email and a password, repeat password and sign up. So of course nothing happens because this is a dummy page. So it says, sorry, the page you were looking for does not exist. That is fine. I will stop this recording and I will say, okay. And you can see all these objects are recorded and I will say, okay. And all the objects are recorded here on this folder. And we have all our objects here and our test is here. This is test two. Now, if I run this on a Chrome browser, this should run properly. You can see it is running properly and we have everything, everything is passed. Now let us take a real world scenario where there is some change on this page. So as of now, if I right click on the email text box and I go to inspect and you can see we have the name as email here. So this is one of the properties. And if I go to my Catalon studio and look at what is the locator being used for this email text box, and it is using email a name as well here. So you can see it is using name equals email here. Now, let us say we got a new build and the name changes. So I can actually go to the page HTML. So I will do a edit on this page source. 
I will search for email and you can see this is the HTML I will change this to let us say email one so I have changed this email to email one and I will save this and if I refresh my web page and I inspect the element again and you can see the name is now changed and it is email one now so now if I run my test again it will not be able to find it with this particular xpath which is email one so I will try to run my test again I will run on a Chrome browser And you can see it is waiting on the email but finally it was able to find it so if i again go to the console here again you can see the same thing happened it was unable to find the element by the proposed x path or by the x path that we had selected which is uh, input at name email and then it tried with other x path so this is the failed x path but it is trying with all others and then finally it is using the uh, best approach and this is the best X path it could find and it is able to run it without any failures and here uh, if I go to the logs again you can see here we have the entry and this is the broken X path and this is the new proposed X path I can approve it and say okay and then I will refresh my object repository and now if I go to the email object you can see the new x path is here so next time onwards it will use this x path so this is how you can uh, use this plugin uh, i can see a lot of you are uh, putting some messages on the chat window uh, i won't be able to you know look at all your chats now uh, during the session uh, it will be only after the session i can look at it uh, so uh, uh, please uh, wait for that I won't be able to you know look at the chat and do the session simultaneously so just please wait for that so this was uh, auto healing smart xpath plugin and here this is the solution to the problem that we have regularly with automation testing where we can uh, locate element with multiple locators and then with smart xpath it can identify the objects with uh, with the best strategy which is available and even if one one particular property or xpath is broken it can use others and can decide what is the best property or the best uh, approach to uh, use and find the element so this will be very useful uh, it it will save us a lot of time and resources we do not have to always go and check what is the failure and then uh, do all the changes manually so this will be very useful the second problem that we are going to see today is the visual validation or we have scenarios where we want the image comparison to be done along with our functional automation testing and uh, we know that this is sometimes a very common thing that we also want to visually test our websites or web applications along with functional testing and earlier it was mostly done uh, manually because they were very uh, less or very uh, less featured tools and here in visual validation this is one of the approaches in testing where which is a quality assurance activity where we verify the UI appears correctly to the user and we check the UI on location size shape color pixels etc so this is what visual validation is and we now have a Apple tools integration plugin in Catalon studio and using this we can actually do the visual validation which will include image comparison and also if you want to uh, check the look and feel of your web pages based on location shape size pixels etc all this can be done so again I will show you a very quick demo of this and you can again go to the Catalon plugins you can go to Catalon website and go to plugins and here we have a visual validation Apple tools integration custom keyword plugin click here and it will take you to this page where we have some documentation and 
you can also see a sample project link so just in case you want to look at a sample project you can get it from here this is going to be a github page uh, some guidelines are here and then uh, the 612 beta release which i am using right now for this webinar can be found here so you will have the 6.1.2 release very soon most probably this week otherwise if you want to use the beta version that i am using right now you can get it from here and this is the sample project so you can uh, the same way you can just uh, get it uh, for free for uh, some trial and then uh, can subscribe for it and once you have it when you go to your catalon studio so let me close all these tabs when you go to your catalon studio go to plugin store and say reload plugins and here you can see i have my apply tools integration custom keyword plugin so this is uh, installed and available in my catalon studio now the next thing i will do is i have to create an account on apply tools so apply tools is the uh, platform that we are using for visual validation i will go to applytools.com and here go to sign in now you can click on try for free and create an account by giving your email and password i already have it so i will just log into my account and i will go to my dashboard and you can see this is the dashboard so whatever uh, what all changes or checks we will do with our images or web pages for visual validation will be coming here and we can uh, look at all our results here now on your apply tools account if you go to the user go to my api key and you can copy this api key and then go to your catalon studio and then go to project settings and here you will find this plugins section and apply tools integration and here we can provide our api key like this and say apply and okay and now we have our integration done with apply tools i can now create a new test case so i will say new test case and i will say this is test 3 and i can again do a recording so for this demo i am just going to use uh, this demo website this is hello world i'll copy this url and go to record web and i will provide the url here in the url box and i will start recording on a chrome browser and you can see this has come up now this is one of the web pages and i want to um, capture the entire web page and i want to use this for a comparison so i will just go to this add button go to custom keywords and now because i have the apply tools plugin i will have the keywords for apply tools so you can see these are the keywords i will click on check window so this will check the take a image take a snapshot and will check this and i can also provide a name for this check so i will say this is checkpoint 1 or i'll say 01 and say okay and then i will click on this diff link and i will again create a custom keyword and i will select apply tools check window and here i will say this is check point 02 and say okay and i will stop the recording and say okay these are the objects and say okay so this is our test and if you see this in the script mode this is how the test looks like a very simple test we are doing our normal actions and wherever i want to capture and check the window i am just using this apply tools 
keyword check window. So after the first URL, I'm using this and I'm providing the name checkpoint 01 to this check. And then I will click on the diff link. And then again, I'm using the same keyword check window and providing it a name checkpoint 02. I will now try to run this and I will use a Chrome browser and let us see what happens. So it goes to the URL and it should be trying to check it. And if I go to my Apple tools and refresh, you can see checkpoint one is here and checkpoint zero one and zero two are here. And you can look at here. This is the image captured. So this is the image captured. And this is the default uh, resolution, but you can change this and I will just talk about it in a moment that you can also check with different resolutions at a same at the same time. So on a single action, we can also compare our web pages or images on multiple resolutions. So this is our first checkpoint and this is our second checkpoint. Okay, now here the first time you will run this this will be considered as base images. So there is no failure because these are the base images now. Now the next time I will run the comparison will be made with these base images. So the next time I will run it will compare with these images. If it if there is any difference it will find it will report the difference and you can see this uh, if I click on diff one I get a random number generated here and every time I click on this link, there is a new random number generated. So this should be shown as a difference. And this is exactly what we are going to test. So I'm going to go back to my Catalan studio and I will run this on Chrome again. And let us see what happens this time. So this is running. If I go and check my Apple tools, I can see this running checkpoint one is uh, has is successful is passed and checkpoint two is still running. I will again refresh this and let us wait and you can see it is now unresolved. So checkpoint one is passed because the image or the uh, check was exactly equal to the base image. So there is no difference here. However, in checkpoint two, it found some difference. And if I go and look at the details, so you can see there is some difference here and you can see the differences. So it has identified some changes or some differences and it is showing us all the differences. You can also compare it with the base image. So you can click here and it will show the changes. So this was base image and this is the new image. And now we have the option. So you can see this is not shown as a failure, but unresolved. That is because this change might be a planned change. This change might be as we expected. So in that case, you can click on this thumbs up and this will now become a new base image. However, if you think this is a issue, you can click on this thumbs down and it will be shown as a failure. Some other important uh, features are you can actually uh, select an area to ignore. So just for example, you have some uh, date field which will always change or a timestamp field. So you can just uh, click that area or select that area and that will be ignored. So you can also do something like this. So uh, this is how you can do it. I will also show you an example on uh, the sample project. So you can see this is the GitHub sample project and you can find the link right on the Apple tools integration plugin page. So this is, is the sample project. You can get it from here. So I have this project on my Catalan studio and I'm just going to upload it or reload it here. So uh, some of you are uh, putting your questions in the Q and a box and also on the chat window. Uh, I won't be able to look at your questions right now uh, during the webinar, but I will look at it later on. So when we have the Q&A phase, we will uh, discuss the questions. Okay, so here is the sample project and you can see here we have two test cases already created and here is again a 
apply tools keywords used here if i go to the script mode you can see this is check window and here this is the checkpoint name so let me say this is unique string 001 and i can run this so it is again going to this website automationpractice.com and then checking it and then here it is checking the objects as well so i'll just go here and again i will name this as 002 i will save this and i will run this again on a chrome browser this can be a more realistic examples of a real website with a lot of images here so you can see it is now checking if i go to my apple tools account and do a refresh i'll just confirm these changes so you can see unique string 001 has come here which is still running and this is pass and then we have unique string 002 which was the other checkpoint so you can name this as per your convenience these checkpoints and i will just refresh to see if it is uh, all the details are available now so yes our test is done we should be having this updated here and yes you can see both of these are here now one important thing that you must have seen here is we have two images for the same web page so if i go here you can see this is in the resolution 1200 into 625 and the next image that we have is this which is for the same web page which is with the resolution 800 into 600 now this is very very important and a very useful feature so you can go to your project on catalon studio go to project and go to settings and here when you go to the plugins and go to apply tools integration you can see this visual grid viewport and here you can provide all your resolutions all your uh, numbers that you want to check with so here we have two resolutions or two two viewport 800 into 600 and then 1200 625 and you can keep on adding it so if you want to check your uh, websites with multiple resolutions you can do all in a single go you do not have to do it multiple times separately you can do it at once so because we have given these two viewports here we are getting these two images with different viewports and the same thing happens with unique string 002 we have these two viewports so this was the first time so this is the base image i will run it again and this time it will compare with the base images so i'm just going to run it again on a chrome browser and it should be now checking the web pages for visual validation so this sample project can be a, a good resource for you if you want to look at all the keywords how it is used and if i now go to my apply tools and refresh it i can see unique string 001 is still running and this is still running and we have a uh, unique string 002 also running now so it is still running and if there will be any differences on any on any web page on any resolution it will capture it and we will see the results so you can see there was a failure because there must be some difference and if i go and refresh the apply tools dashboard here i can see so you can see unique string 002 checkpoint is a pass however when i see this it is a failure or it is unresolved and i can check the differences here so here on the resolution 1200 625 there are some changes here and you can see the changes or differences and if i go to this i believe uh, let me just see yeah this is fine so you can see 
uh, with resolution 800 into 600 there are no changes however with this resolution there are some changes so this is going to be very useful that you can check the differences with different resolutions uh, we have another sample test case here with some more keywords here so you can see we have this keyword i will say this is unix string 001 and then this is eyes open so here we have multiple checks in the same keyword i will save this and i will try to run on a chrome browser and in a moment i will show you the results as well it goes to hello world the same website enters uh, the name text box and clicks on this click me button and then it should check for all the visual validation differences so if i go to my apple tools account so you can see this is pass and this has captured uh, three objects or three different images and i can run this again so the first time is always the baseline image so this was the first run for this test it is a baseline and now the second run it will compare with the baseline so you can see on this page we have this timestamp so this is a timestamp so this is always changing so we should see this uh, difference on our apply tools so if i run this uh, refresh this you can see this is unresolved and yes as expected this is showing the difference because the timestamp is different and you can see this here is the timestamp which is different and that is why it is failed and unresolved and you can also check with the base image so base image the time was 23 12 47 18 and in this it is 23 13 21 528 so this is how now you can accept or reject these changes as per your wish or as per the requirement and then you can store the results so this was uh apply tools plugin and again this is uh, very very useful and with these two plugins the smart xpath and apply tools integration uh, we are moving towards beginning of artificial intelligence integration with our basic automation testing and this is going to be very very useful uh, so you will have some useful links and resources and uh, by tomorrow you should be having a email in your mailboxes that you used to sign in on this uh, for this webinar with all the details on the documentation and uh, the installation page links for these two plugins and there will also be some promo codes if you want to get these plugins and then in case you want to do any further q a on uh, this webinar on these features you will again have a link where you can put your questions and uh, you can receive the answers there so uh, with this i am closing uh, this session and the uh, uh, stage is now open for the q a so if you have any questions for me you can go to your q a button uh, section on the zoom toolbar and uh, you can put your questions there So uh, Venkatesh says, I am pretty new to AI and Catalon. Provide the details if there are any prerequisites. So Venkatesh, uh, this uh, tool is like very easy. Even if you do not have any programming background or automation background, you can directly use Catalon Studio. You will find a lot of tutorials. You can go to the website. So you can go to catalonstudio.com or catalon.com. The website is catalon.com and uh, you will find a lot of doc. Uh, documentation manuals tutorials here uh, sample projects videos so there there are a lot of resources it is uh, very straightforward and uh, the ai again as i have explained on this webinar uh, this is exactly how you can use these plugins and it will be uh, very easy and useful so uh, we have a lot of questions i will try to answer uh, the unique questions uh, whatever is possible within the time uh so we have a question what happens when there are more than one mismatched object how the plugin knows which object to match so uh there are multiple keywords so when you say check a window uh then it checks the entire window so if i can show you we have some uh, we have some keywords or functionalities and let me try to 
show you uh, the documentation for this and all these links will be available to you so i'm going to the documentation on apply tools and here you can see there are a lot of uh, features and functions so you can check some particular region you can check the entire window you can check some particular frame you can check a particular element so there are a lot of features available so whatever you want you can do it if you are uh, you want to check the entire window you can just use the check window keyword that like i have used so you can do that uh, again the question is the plugin free uh, or commercial so these two plugins that we discussed today on this webinar uh, they are paid uh, plugins uh, they will be available uh, for trial period so you can try them out and then uh, you can get them uh, with some subscription and uh, you will also get an email with the promo codes if you want to get it for on a discount you can get that uh, Gagan has a question is Catalon Studio free software if yes how many days we will have trial version so Gagan Catalon Studio is uh, free it is completely free and you can go to the Catalon website and you can see there here is a free download so this is a free platform and there are just some plugins that maybe uh, we have a subscription on them and then they can be some uh, business uh, support that is uh, with some subscription however the tool is completely free you can just download it and use it there are is uh, no trial period or something like that you can use it free of cost so uh, so Gagan again has a question is finding neighbor functionality only possible with XPath uh, Gagan so uh, finding of neighbors will be there uh, as a core functionality of Catalon Studio. So when even if you do not have the smart XPath, it will still be able to record the neighbors. However, uh, whenever there is any failure of the XPath, it will not uh, by default look at all the possible XPaths and try with all the possible strategies and then select the best possible uh, XPath if you do not have the plugin. So we have uh, a lot of questions. I'm trying to see unique questions here. So, uh, so Chase has a question, will this recording be sent out to all? Uh, yes, Chase, you will be having a link for this webinar recording. And uh, mostly by tomorrow, you should be having an email with the webinar recording and all the links uh, for this webinar and all the useful links. You will have the everything in your email. So Vinod has a question while adding the objects or web elements to object repository, it's adding all the XPath and also nearby objects. During execution in case if the object getting failed, it's picking up from the list, which is already available in the OR. Uh, it's a great feature. Uh, so how it is related to AI? So uh, Vinod, see, uh, when we talk about AI, uh, as I have shown in the examples that AI is uh, a uh, field where we create smart systems that can actually take some decisions based on some external factors. When we talk about automation, automation is we uh, program for some particular functionality and that uh, function or that particular framework or feature will run exactly as programmed n number of times. So the advantage with automation is we can program it once and it will run multiple number of times, but it will not uh, do any changes based on any conditions. It will run as we have programmed. However, with artificial intelligence, it can actually uh, learn and improve and then also take some decisions. So as we have seen here with the smart X path, it can actually, uh, if there is any failure with the X path, it can actually uh, look at all the other possibilities and all the other strategies, including the neighbors as well. So it is not just the properties of the element, its own properties, but also the surrounding elements. And then it can find out the best strategy for you. And this will not even fail your test case. So without any failures, you will be able to continue with your testing. And then at the end, you can look at what was the broken X path and what is the proposed X path. And then you can uh, decide if you want to go with the proposed X paths. So uh, will visual validation work fine if the resolution of screen changes? So uh, uh, 
this is one of the reasons you want to do visual validations. You want to check uh, what happens with different resolutions. So whenever you want to check with different res resolutions, you can put them in the viewport as I have shown you. So you can go to your project settings and under plugins, you can go to Apple tools integration. And here you can provide all your resolutions that you want to check with and you will have different images as per the resolutions you have set and they will be compared with uh, the same resolution every time. Uh, I'm looking at more questions. So there are a lot of questions. So I'm just trying to see uh, some unique questions. So Vijay says, does execution takes extra time when visual testing is being performed? Uh, yes, Vijay. So the extra time is for that particular step or that particular keyword to run. Uh, so that's that's the all. It's like whatever uh, time it the keyword takes, uh, that will get added to your complete uh, duration. So yes, it will take some some extra time, not a lot. So we have a question by Rohan. Uh, we in CVS Health are planning to use Catalon. However, the usage of this tool needs to be approved by internal IT security team. IT security team has requested a uh, static application security test scan reports. Do you have a copy of the report for Catalon which I can share it with our IT security team? So uh, Rohan, uh, what you can do uh, right away is if you go to Catalon, uh, you will have a section for FAQs. So you can go here and here you can see the security and privacy FAQ. You can go here and you can see all these FAQs on security and privacy. So if this uh, helps you and you can share it with your internal team as well, if this helps you, it's good. Otherwise, you can always uh, connect to the support team from here or you can also mention in the Catalon forum and uh, you can get a support from there as well. So Venkatesh says, can I get AppliTools I plugin for Eclipse for using on existing scripts? Uh, you can get AppliTools uh, and uh, you can create your own scripts. However, then you will have to do a lot of coding to uh, do the same functionalities or features. You will have to write all the codes. And this is one of the advantages of using uh, Catalon Studio. So all these code is already written and uh, there are custom keywords available and you can directly use custom keywords. So you can, you can use on Eclipse, but then you will have to do all the coding yourself. So uh, there are some people who are saying that they missed some sections. So do not worry. You should be having the recording uh, in your email. You, you should be getting an email with the recording link mostly by tomorrow uh, for validation with different res resolutions. Do you need baseline images to be created for each resolution first? Uh, yes, uh, this is a question by Sonak. Yes, Sonak. So for every uh, validation, you need a baseline image. And whenever you run your test for the first time, the image or the uh, whatever is captured as per your keyword, that image is taken as a baseline by default. And for every subsequent run, your images will be compared against this baseline. So yes, you need a baseline image. So here, so uh, there's a Question, is there an option to replace all references to a broken locator with a working locator across all tests that uses a particular broken locator? So yes, uh, when you will run your tests, uh, in case whatever broken locators are there and whatever uh, proposed locators uh, are used by Smart XPath, you will get all those entries in the logs here. So you can get multiple entries here and then you can actually select approve all. So we have a button for approve all. So with one click, you can approve all and you can also check all, all that you want to approve. So just in case there are 10 entries and you want to approve eight out of them. So you can just, you will have a checkbox here, click that and say approve all and everything will be approved. 
so i believe some of you are uh, putting your questions in the chat window i'm i'm looking at the q and a section so you should be having a q and a button so you can put your questions there i am as of now looking at the q and a box and not on the chat window so i am looking at some more questions right now i am getting a lot of questions so it is balaji saying will our recording work in cross browser without any additional code so yes you do not have to add any code for cross browser they should work without any additional code so mahesh uh, has a question how this plugin will be useful for angular js uh, bootstrap web stack Uh, where no ids are available and they are dynamic uh, mahesh so uh, very good question and i would suggest that you actually uh, do a recording and you should be able to see some locators on your uh, object repository like we have seen these locators so you can look at the locators whatever it has recorded that tool has recorded and then you can get this smart x path enable it and then use it so this will be a very good use case because this is something uh, will be a very good use of this plugin where the locators or the ids are dynamic so of course when there are dynamic you can uh, get a lot of functional uh, failures but with this you should be able to use it so uh, you can actually do a, a check on this and this will be a very good use case for this plugin so uh, there is a question can we use catalon with cucumber uh, java so you can use catalon with cucumber and the bdd support is there so you can see you can go to this include and you can add your feature files and your uh, step definitions here so you can do that uh, this is not a part of this webinar but yeah you will find a lot of documentation and tutorials for that as well so how does the ai choose which path is best so uh, here what happens is once there is a broken x path or it is not able to find the x path it checks with all the other x paths and also checks with the uh, neighbors and then there is some internal uh, coding which i am not like not very much aware of uh, this is something within the code that how it chooses the best x path so basically it is looks at all the features and when it finds something which is the best possible uh, match for that particular element based on its properties based on its neighboring elements and based on the attributes it selects that path and that is the proposed x path it shows to us himraj has a question for the visual regression testing do we need a third party image library or catalon is bundled with a library so uh, you do not need anything else uh, you should be having a account on apply tools and you should be having this plugin which is catalon apply tool plugin integration and that's it you should not be required to do any other integrations for this visual validation uh, what version will it work on is the beta version stable so for uh, apply tools the version is 6.1.2 and as i have shown you you can get the beta version from here and this should be okay if you want to test it however you should be getting 6.1.2 final version very soon most probably within this week so you don't have to wait long for that you should be having it very soon so you should be able to run multi uh, browser testing parallel testing you can do that so uh i am having a lot of questions i think we do not have a lot of time to look at all the questions uh so
So Vishal has a question, how this AI works when we are doing a manual scripting and not the recording? So Vishal, it is not the uh, uh, question of manual or scripting. Uh, the uh, question is that this is a feature which is inbuilt and using for using this feature, we can use any mode. So basically we are uh, using a plugin and then we are using some custom keywords. So we just need to call these custom keywords either while we are creating our test case manually or we are creating through scripting mode. And this is the feature which is inbuilt in the uh, keywords and the plugin. So uh, there's a question, how do I continue recording the existing test case? So you can continue, for example, I can show you this is a test case. And when I click on, uh, I'm, I'm on this test case, I have selected this. When I click on this record web, uh, you can see, do you want to continue recording test case? So I can say, yes, I do. And whatever I will record will be recorded as the uh, further steps on this particular test case. So you, you can do that. So uh, Joffy Thomas has a question, will the XPath work in case if the element position changed? Uh, yes, so this is exactly uh, what is the uh, a very good use case for this particular uh, plugin. So in case there is any change in the position, even then uh, it should be able to uh, check with all the possible attributes and all the possible XPaths it has found. And you can actually do a test that it is able to uh, identify the element. So we have a lot of questions. Uh, so uh, here, so we have a question in case we have checkboxes with variable IDs. Is auto healing smart expat able to find out exactly on which checkbox we click? So uh, this is you should be able to do this. So any object which is which can be a checkbox which can be a button which can be a text box we should be able to work with all these objects using this plugin for xpath so i'm having a lot of questions and of course i won't be able to take everything every question now and we already have uh, crossed our time so uh, you will be receiving an email with a link for this webinar documentation page and you can put all your questions which are unanswered on that page and you will be receiving an answer soon on that so with that i will be closing this session and thank you everyone for joining in case you have any more questions you can put that into the uh, webinar documentation page that you should be receiving in the email that you will get most probably by tomorrow so thanks again all of you for joining this and have a good day